Hey folks, welcome back to the EVM studio. Today I'm going to be talking about envelopes and um, I'm really excited for this video because previously we've talked about signals, we've talked about filters, and along with envelopes we've really got all of the basic building blocks for a synthesizer. Uh, so with that, let's get right into it. Uh, when we talk about an envelope in Logic, usually it will be specified in terms of an ADSR envelope or a attack, decay, sustain, and release envelope. And what that means is it's going to control sort of the amplitude or some parameter over time of a note. Um, so you can kind of see in this drawing, you know, we have an attack phase, a decay phase, a sustain phase, and a release phase. And each one of those is kind of um, controlling the amplitude of this signal. And I thought that for this video we could try out a real-world instrument, my guitar, uh, in order to illustrate what an envelope like this might look like in the real world with a real instrument. Okay, so here we are in Audacity, and I'm just going to record a single note. Alright, so there we've got our note. And let's take a closer look. All right, so what you'll notice is that we have um, we have the makings of an ADSR envelope. We have this initial uh, spike in amplitude when I pluck the string. And then we have this period of rapid decay. Um, and after that, we have a period of what you could call sustain. Now, this is a physical instrument, so uh, you know, the string is vibrating, but it's losing energy due to uh, wind resistance. It's producing this sound wave. It's vibrating the body of the guitar. So you're not going to get perfect sustain. And uh, in the digital world, in Logic, you can, you can have that. Um, and sustain generally for a guitar is a really sought after trait. You know, uh, better built guitars tend to have more sustain, and that's something that people look for. Um, but you're never going to have uh, a note that uh, sustains indefinitely um, unless you have some sort of feedback or something like that. Um, but you have a sustain phase, more or less, and then finally you have the decay phase when I let go of the note and the amplitude goes to, to, uh, goes to zero. So you have, a, you have the makings of an ADSR envelope here um, in terms of amplitude. I also wanted to point out, though, uh, this is kind of interesting. So if you look at the waveform really closely, uh, during the pluck, we have all of this uh, high frequency content here in the attack phase. We have all these kind of jagged edges. Um, but if you look at the the waveform more in the sustain phase, what you'll see is that a lot of those jagged edges have gone away. This looks a lot more like a sine wave. And the reason for that is that um, when you pluck the string, the length of the string is going to determine the wavelength of the note that you ultimately hear. Um, but the pluck itself has all sorts of frequency content associated with it. So your fingernail slides over the string. It's almost kind of like a white noise sound. Um, but the all of the frequency content other than the harmonics of that wavelength are going to be dampened away. And so the signal becomes more uh, more and more like um, that uh, harmonic uh, as the note decays. And what you can think of that as is you have a ADSR window in terms of amplitude, but you also have an ADSR window in terms of uh, frequency. And it's kind of like a low pass filter that is initially open, and as the note decays, the filter closes. And so that's a technique that you can use to create a pluck sound with a synthesizer. Uh, the synth synthesizer. So I think that's kind of the main takeaway from this. All right, and I just wanted to bring this full circle and uh, illustrate where we can find some of these in Logic. And I'm going to do another video on you know all aspects of the ESM, but I just wanted to show this really quickly. So one of the features of the ESM is that we can control the decay of both the filter and the decay 
in terms of amplitude. So using these two knobs, we can essentially shorten or lengthen how quickly the node is going to decay or the filter is going to decay. And in this case, um, decay of the filter means how quickly are we going to clamp down the cutoff frequency of the filter. So um, let's just go ahead and uh, take a look at what that sounds like. So I've set this up. It's a filter with a high resonance. So you're going to get a little bit of that kind of tinny sound that we've been talking about. But what's really cool is as I change the decay of the filter, you'll hear the um, resonance shift around. So um, let's see, see what that sounds like. So you can see, even if I leave the uh, filter decay in the middle, you can actually hear the resonance point, which is the, you know, again, um, going back to the filters video, is the uh, cutoff frequency, it's uh, shifting down. Um, and we can do the same thing with the amplitude decay. So um, let's just turn that off. And then uh, the amplitude decay will control kind of whether this sounds more like a you know, drawn out note or a pluck. Alright, so that's envelopes and um, that's both a uh, filter envelope and a amplitude envelope. Um, I think that's all for today. Uh, thanks for checking it out and see you next time.